part of the theory that comes with the movement map. Today, this is another movement map lesson, but it's focused on these different aspects of the whip effect or the whip swing. And that's the producing a consistent swing path and a consistent point of contact. And doing that using the laws of physics, letting the laws of physics work with you instead of against you. So let's get started on that. So a quick refresher course on the parts of a tennis racket. So we have our handle, we have our throat, and we have our head. That's three parts of the tennis racket, right? Well, no, there's a fourth part, an invisible part, and that's the center of mass of this device. The center of mass is the average mass of the, of the object, and on a tennis racket, it's located at the balance point, about two thirds of the way up before the throat of the racket. This is where you can balance the racket. We'll talk about the importance of this fourth invisible part, the center of mass now. So each of the major swing sports, here's a driver for golf, has a center of mass. Again, just like the tennis racket, most of the weight in this driver is towards the end here in the club head, right? Just like our racket head. And so the balance point, the average center of mass is somewhat about two thirds of the way out from the handle. The baseball bat, very similar. Most of the mass, or the weight is in the barrel of the bat here. So the center of mass is, you can just sort of experiment and feel with it somewhere around two thirds right before the head of the barrel is the balance point. And to remind you, most of the weight in a racket is in the head. So the balance point is gonna be sort of two thirds of the way up from the handle. And you might be saying at this point, Kim, so what? How's this really helped me become a better tennis player? Help me swing better. Let me go a little bit deeper into this whole whip analogy and explain. So let's go back to looking at the bull whip and sort of exactly how it works and the parts of the bull whip. So we have the handle, it's like on a tennis racket. We have a, a thong, it's like the throat of the racket. And then it goes all the way down to this piece here, which is called the fall. This acts as sort of the anchor point that swings around the cracker at the end of the cracking of the whip. So this fall piece is pretty pivotal. So how does our tennis racket compare to the structure of the, the whip? Oh, we have the handles, right? The handle, we have the throat, here's the throat. And this center mass of the tennis racket is like the fall of the whip. And it serves as an anchor point for the rotation of the racket head around the swing circle, which I'll explain. So in the goat whip, kinetic whip stroke that we're trying to develop, and the overall form being a rotational form from the inside of the slot around in the circle, coming into contact and then passing through. Well, the center mass of the racket head, when thrown out correctly on this swing circle, basically wants to rotate the racket head through into contact and square the ball automatically. So therefore you don't have to be worrying like we do now if you have a recreation swing with a levering pushing action like this. This is extremely difficult to time and at high speeds it's, you know, unless you're a pro and you've practiced for years, it's pretty much impossible to do it at high speed. But with a rotational swing in the correct manner, which we'll talk about, this head follows the hand in a pulling action and then as it turns, the head wants to rotate in and around through on its own. Physics takes over, you don't have to do anything. Let's take a closer look at this concept from inside Goat Studio. This is a simple diagram to show you how the center of mass of the racket acts as an anchor in the rotational swinging movement. The racket head will want to swing or rotate around this anchor point. So you might be asking yourself, is this invisible center of mass just hype or a myth? 
So let me show you these slow motion videos of me throwing a golf club, a baseball bat, and a tennis racket. I'll highlight a few parts of this action in a few moments, but first let's focus on how the golf club, baseball bat, and tennis racket all rotate around their center of mass as they are thrown in the air. Again, the center of mass acts as an anchor propelling the head of the club, bat, or racket around the arc. So with this racket extending out as our arms extend out, flowing the rotational energy from the core of our body is actually flowing through the racket, through the center of mass, holding it back till it can't hold it back any longer. And then it whips through. You know, it's a release of that pent up coil and energy of the arm and our throwing action. I have a little diagram that I'll show in the background of this video will reduce my size of my video that shows the idea of uh, a mass, center of mass being pulled smoothly behind it. You, you can see this phenomenon all the time in a, a, a car and a, and a trailer. So again, if the car is the handle and the trailer is the head, that as this car maneuvers and goes, this head will want to follow it. If it's on an arc like this, it'll follow smoothly around. It won't jump up or lay back. It will try to track it. And that's what we want with a pulling action, using the center of a mass to keep the racket lagging behind on the smooth track that we're gonna produce with our topspin shot. I said at the beginning of this lesson movement map, that we wanted the laws of physics to work with us, not against us. And so the third element, our third law of physics that's helping us with this topspin swing is the manner in which we're throwing this racket on edge through the air. And again, I'll post a picture in the background to shrink me up to show you an airplane taking off. So when we throw the racket out on edge, much like we would throw a Frisbee if we were throwing it high, the release would be something like this. We wouldn't throw it flat. It would just dive into the ground. We want this upward vector and use the airfoil of the Frisbee to keep it in the air. Well, a similar thing happens if we throw it on edge, is that the, <laughs> the air pressure is different on either side of this bevel here, at the, this airfoil at the top, and it gives the racket more lift and stability, just like it does an airplane. And it's maybe not huge, but it's pretty substantial, considering that we were trying to throw this at 80 miles an hour around this circle. Uh, whether I'm throwing the racket up in the air like you saw me, or whether I'm hitting our goat topspin shot, the actions are very similar. And for good reason, as I said, the throwing action underlies the stroking action. Uh, any wobble, any deviation in this path is gonna result in an error. So how do we possibly swing this at 80 miles an hour and make contact so perfectly, uh, almost every time if you're a goat. Well, not every time, but close to every time. So these laws of physics, again, if we throw this on edge, I can even feel sort of the racket sort of give a little bit of a rise as I come around and through. And the racket does stabilize in its path. And so our chances of making good contact are that much more increased. Uh, any wobble, any 